Hey guys, welcome back to Jay's Speed Shop. Um, today we're going to kind of walk around and kind of look at the 93 Trans Am project and kind of what we have left to do. Um, got it running this fall. Uh, it's a, a 93 Trans Am with a LS1 swap. Um, got it to the tuner probably right around Labor Day. Uh, got to use it for a couple months. Just kind of puts around the weekends, testing out everything. Uh, seems to run great. Uh, got lots of power. Pretty happy with it. Sounds awesome. Um, kind of got we love got left with some bodywork items and kind of it's going to need a coat of paint. It looks pretty good in the picture here, but up close on I'll show you some of the flaws in the paint. Um, and then uh, a couple of mechanical things: the tachometer doesn't work right. If I hook up my uh, OBD2 uh, scan tool, it's feeding right there, but the, the tachometer itself is reading about half of uh, the RPM that the, uh, the scan tool is getting. So I think it's uh, kind of looking online, like it's possible that you might put a uh, little uh, diode between, kind of jump to get more power to the tack feed. Um, I'm going to contact the company that did the, the conversion harness for this and check and see if they have any ideas before I do anything. Um, I don't know 100% that the tack worked before. We only drove the car a couple times with the LT1 in it and not, really didn't pay attention to whether the tack was working. Um, so we're not sure. It could be the tack itself. It sounds like it's a fairly common problem that with the LS1, does not, uh, PCM does not put off a strong enough signal to get a good reading. Um, the other thing I've read is that it could be something in the settings, but the tuner, when we took the car to the tuner, he's the one that made the you know, first note that the tack wasn't reading right. And I, he's a pretty experienced guy, so I'm pretty sure he would have, if there was an adjustment on the PCM that needed to be done, he, he would have uh, done that. So. Uh, we're going to look into that some more. Uh, probably need to, uh, I'll walk you around and kind of show you a couple of things we need to work on the car. So there's kind of the to-do list for the car. Um, got a couple things checked off, but first thing, this and this side's not too bad, but you can almost get a, a finger into the gap on this side. Um, this side, you, you really can. It's just a huge gap on the fender. Um, you can see here's kind of where the paint's bad. It, it's peeled off at the edge here. Um, it's got about four spots in the body that's done that. I think there's two on the other side of the car as well. The overall from, you know, distance, it looks pretty nice and shiny. And it, it, this car sat outside for probably five years without anything being done to it. And um, the paint was very faded when we got it. And I spent probably a week rubbing the thing out, probably about four or five steps and got to where it shines pretty good and, and got real, I mean, it was literally like kind of almost like it turned a dull gray, but there's definitely uh paints a little thin in spots up on the roof, a couple spots like right here. You can kind of see right here where it's kind of through the, the top coat. So I think we're going to try and get a cheap, cheapy paint job put on it just to make it look a little pretty. Um, need to replace these window felts. Several of these clips are broken. These parts are available. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks for a pair of them. They're not too bad. Um, the problem I think I have is that I think what these clips break, go into on the door in a couple of spots may be broken as well. So I'm going to have to see if I can figure out a way to fix those. Um, but I've popped this in place a couple of times and with the clips broken, it just keeps popping back out. The passenger side one has stayed so far. Um, and then one of the other things I want to do is these taillights. You can see how they're kind of starting to separate up there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I got some taillight blackout paint. I'm thinking I'm going to do is blackout over top of where it's done this. The center section is fine and then just clear coat the whole thing again. Um, this badge, we've got a replacement one of these. It's got nice new red lettering on it. We've got a new tail, uh, third brake light lens that's pretty faded. Um, I also have a set of honeycomb lights too. So I don't know which one's actually better. These, I think the honeycomb ones, I think has one of them has a little crack in it. So I think these are probably the better ones, but we'll see which ones look better once I clean these ones up. I, but I think the honeycomb have ones have the same issue a little bit, maybe not quite as bad but they weren't perfect either. Um, and then got a little bit of rust, surface rust right here, and a little bit of up just under this lip a little bit. Where, so I think they had somebody had slicks on the car because we got a set of slicks with it when we got it. I think they were rubbing. 
if I recall, the slicks look like they hit rubbed, and it kind of rubs some paint off, and there's a little bit of surface rust under there, so we'll fix that. We'll clean this up. This has got a crack in it on the ground effects, and these ground effects are kind of wobbly. Uh, so I think we're going to take those off on both sides and just make sure it's clean underneath and then uh, try to fasten those up. They kind of look like they're half-assed put on. The, uh, a lot of the fasteners are missing. The other item on the hood, as you can see, we've got a fairly even gap, and it lines up pretty good here. And then when you get to this side, the hood hits. And it was bad enough that you can see where it's chipped. And that's because the actual latch itself was actually hitting. The latch stuck out too far. So I actually cut the latch and re-welded it and shortened the latch so it sits back a little bit further. But the, uh, I don't mean the latch, but I guess the handle that released the latch when you open the hood. But it still hits here. So I'm hoping as I adjust these fenders, and you can see the front fender at the top, it like kind of sticks out a little bit over the door. At the bottom, they're fine. Both sides, but both sides of the top stick up a little bit. So there, there's an adjustment screw down there. And then when I pop the hood, I'll show you what I think I need to do to adjust these fenders. But I'm hoping when you, once those fenders come in, that'll squeeze the nose out enough that this will clear. And I don't know if this is a problem. And maybe the hood needs to be slid back just a little bit, but then this gap's going to be off. I think a lot of it was, I think this is actually bent. I'll need to measure maybe the height. But I think this is because it was pushed down for so long that this is just bent a little bit. And maybe I need to put something underneath to wedge it up so it kind of reforms to the right shape. But anyways, I want to try to get that before I do paint, obviously, is get that so it's not touching anymore. It could just be a matter of maybe this hood edge needs to be trimmed a little bit back too. It's just a fiberglass hood. Um, it's kind of a unique hood on this car. I have not seen another one like it. Uh, when I got the car, he told me it was a fairly rare hood. Normally, when you see this, it's, it's raised up more than a factory hood, I think. And then usually you see like a double scoop. You see like a line that goes across here and it's kind of like split into two uh, where this is all one, one scoop. And it is functional. It actually feeds air up and uh, through those holes. So you can here see where I had to uh, actually cut and shorten this handle so that it wouldn't uh, touch the front of the car anymore because it was actually sticking up here like where it was almost up to that. I think I took about half an inch to an inch out of it. Seems to work fine. Um, but again, here, I've tried adjusting this to push it out a little bit. That's about as far as that'll go. Um, so I think what I need to do there is to loosen up these screws at the top here, because I think that's got some adjustability. And then I think there's no shims under these hood mount bolts. So there's one, looks like we're missing one. Maybe one, two, should be one there, three, and then four. Then allow this fender to come inward a little bit. Um, this one a little bit more than that one, but I probably will bring this one in as well. You can see again, it just doesn't quite have it's hard to get the angle, but it sticks out past the, uh, it's not a smooth transition there. So I think, again, we'll loosen that up and then shim these bolts along the inside. I bought a thing of body shims, maybe just like a 16th of an inch on this side, which I think is then going to cause the headlight to hit the fender. But the headlight on this side has a pretty big gap here. And these, I believe, are just these two bolts here, and you can slide this whole headlight assembly over a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, this hood does actually have airflow. It, it's open on the back here. There's, it's slotted, and so the air is actually flowing. You get some airflow into the filter, I believe. It's, it's actually functional. So we're going to play around with this and see if we can get these, uh, these fenders shimmed in a little bit. This car is, so this is a 93. And as you can see, it has the, I'm um, gonna say like 98 or 2000 and up. I'm not sure what year they switched to this, this trim where it's got the little, ah, it's a little bit, I'd say a little sportier looking trim where it's got the bigger ground effects and the, you know, multiple, uh, like I think the earlier cars only had the fog light hole, didn't have these corner holes or they were not, they were different anyway. Um, so this car has had that later model bodywork on it. 
And I don't know if that was because it was in an accident. I don't hit the, you know, had a clean title. Um, I didn't, I bought it from a neighbor and had a good deal. So I didn't do a Carfax or anything on it. And he didn't really have much history on the car he had bought it used. Um, so don't know if it maybe had been an accident. That's why they replaced her. They just wanted to upgrade it and got the body parts. But definitely some things that were probably not done right on it. Um, and obviously these body panels don't quite fit right. So we're going to try and get those lined up.